Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Yesterday we uh, learnt a very important thing in optim about optimization that whenever there is a minimization problem, there is always an associated maximization problem goes on. This is a sort of duali duality, mean and max, which is a persistent feature of optimization. And we had learned that even this presence of a maximization problem at the back of minimization of a minimization problem is quite natural even when you talk about 0 percent, 2 percent, 0 sum games. So, yesterday we had also learned an important fact that by solving the dual problem, we can a priori give a lower bound to the solution of the primal problem. So, thus the dual problem handling the maximization problem in the context of a minimization one makes a pretty good sense. And yesterday we had spoken about something called weak duality. So, today let us you know do something more. We had only spoken about duality in the context of inequality constraints like if you remember yesterday's talk. So, now let us go and uh, talk in the context of equality constraints also that would allow us to construct duals for linear programming uh, problems, semi definite programming problems. And let us also keep on note today's talk would be essentially more on duality. And of course, if time permits today, I will try to prove down the duality theorem, strong duality theorem for the convex programming case, but it is not necessary that it it will be finished today because there is couple of things involved. So, let us first look at the more general convex optimization problem C p in the more general form where you are asked to minimize a convex function f subject to an a of x is equal to b, where A is a m cross n matrix. Never mind, you can even consider no problem, no probs, no problems if rank A is m, this is m sorry, m cross n matrix that is full rank you may or may not, but it is in general it is this condition holds. If A is a n cross n matrix, no problem if this and B is in R m. So, this is quite a general constant qualification. I would let you as a homework if I add x element of x. So, how do I construct the Lagrangian in this case? That is the thing. So, now how do I express this? I can express Lagrangian now would have x lambda, the Lagrangian multiplier vector associated with this and the vector associated with this. Sorry, sorry I because I have taken here this to be m, I, I would just change this to make it look much more authentic k cross n and this would be k. Actually, when you write on blackboards, it's much life is simpler. So now you have to have a mu. Remember that associated with the equality constraint, the mu has no sign. So x comes from R n, lambda comes from R m plus, which consists 
of the Lagrangian multipliers of inequality constraints and this is the Lagrangian multiplier for the equality constraints it is come from R k. So, it is usually written as f of x you can place y and z also I am just taking you might think ok ok come on guy you have taken y here does not matter y this is just a change of notation because we are in a more general setup. So, here You can also write ax minus v does not matter, whichever way you take it is equality constant. So, this is my associated Lagrangian in this case. So, now this setup defines quite a good class of problems. So, how do I compute the Lagrangian or the Lagrangian dual of several type of optimization problems that would be our first goal today. So, let us consider the linear programming problem in the standard form because very soon we will indulge ourselves in the pleasures of linear programming. Linear programming problem in the standard form. So, again I would like to repeat our goal here the goal is twofold provide examples of how to construct Lagrangian duals of two important class of convex optimization problems. One is the linear programming problem, another is the semi definite programming problem. Now, let us look at the linear programming problem in the standard form. So, if I want to write it more explicitly like the form that I have written for C p. So, I should write in, in this form A is again the k cross n matrix of full rank whatever. So, I can rewrite as so this is my f x c of x. sorry minus x i less than equal to 0. So, these are the inequality constraints and this is the equality constraint. So, once I know this little fact now I would like to imitate and write down the Lagrangian by putting specific f and g i's. So, l x lambda mu is this let me see is c of x plus lambda 1 minus x 1 plus lambda m minus x m plus mu. Okay. So, you see it is quite simple to do the job. Now, once I know the Lagrangian, how do I write down the Lagrangian dual in this particular general case? That would be the second step. So, my first step would be to construct a function theta now would have be of two vector variables lambda and mu, which is again the same thing infimum over all x in R n of L x lambda and mu. Now, the dual problem for this case max of theta lambda mu where lambda is element of R m plus and mu is element of R k. 
So, these are the constraints. So, this is my dual problem. Now, I, it is slightly complicated. So, now if I want to write down the dual problem for this standard linear programming problem, this is often called LP or LPP, linear programming problem in the standard form. Now, I want to construct this function. Now, in this particular case in the context of a linear programming problem, what would be theta lambda mu? Does it have a specific form? That is the thing that we would like to figure out. Now, let us look at it very carefully and see what is therein. So, if I look at it very carefully, let me observe one thing that L x lambda mu is written as I will club the x things together. So, I can write this as c minus lambda into x plus mu b minus mu times a x. This will be as follows then again mu b minus mu a x. So, See, I am gradually coming towards a neater form. Now, this by simple laws of linear algebra can be written as or of just transpose. So, I am able to write this as. Now, I claim that I, I am making a following claim. Let us see how can I the only way see if I want to minimize this function over whole x it has to be finite at least the only way to have L x lambda mu finite right. If I take the minimum over all x, so it would not be of much important unless the only way I have see first of all I need to have this finite in order to have a decent or a proper dual objective function. So, is to have or I will just remind that this actually means I just inadvertently did not do it because it is so common this form right. So, this is my claim. So, let me see how good is this claim? Is it a correct claim or a wrong claim? I have no idea. Now, suppose this is not 0. So, 
So, there must be at least one component which is not 0. So, there exist j such that c minus lambda minus a transpose mu the jth component is non 0. So, let us assume it is done without loss of generality, you could have assumed it to be negative and give a similar sort of argument. Suppose this is strictly bigger than 0. Then, then set x j strictly bigger than 0 and x i equal to 0 if i is not j. Then what I can do is I can keep on increasing the value of x j, keep on increasing the value of x j, make it so big and big and big and big that this function just keeps on blasting up and go towards infinity. Thus, as x j plus infinity, because this is even if it is negative, it will be just suppressed once this becomes very large. So, it blows up. So, it is not finite at all. So, which means that if I want to minimize I can show that I can move along one line and sorry, I sorry, I, and this is unbounded both ways. So, as x j tends to I should have minus infinity sorry, x j tends to minus infinity this thing also tends to minus infinity. See this thing also tends to minus infinity I am writing make a mistake. Because now this, if you take the inner product, then what you will have is that c minus lambda minus a transpose mu, if all the x j is other than all the i is x i is are 0 other than x j, this will only lead to the, the value is this c minus lambda minus a transpose mu j x j. Now, suppose x j is negative and this is positive, then I can keep on, so this will be negative. So, I can go make x j go down, 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 down as much as I like and so this whole thing would go towards minus infinity. So, this infimum will not have a finite value. So, which means if a similar argument can be said if this is strictly less than 0, then, then you can put this to be strictly bigger than 0 and go ahead. So, it shows that if I move and now for this particular class of x j, if I keep on I am, I am generating a sequence which is along which the function value goes down to minus infinity this function value. So, this cannot have a finite minimum. So, there cannot be a finite sort of dual gap function dual function. So, so, but if I put this to be 0, it is immediately finite, it is mu b. So, if you take infimum over whole x, the, all the x in r and that answer would be mu b. So, inf of L x lambda mu, which is theta lambda mu is equal to mu b if a transpose mu plus lambda is equal to c and lambda is in R m plus. Assuming that A is m cross n matrix, I am just writing R m plus without even telling you anything. So, you might just get angry or what is this? In our case, let us take this to an m cross n matrix. Right. So, we have done a calculation. So, now what is the dual problem? Then I have to the dual problem is to minimize B mu over mu and lambda such that 
so sorry not minimize maximize the dual problem maximize mu and lambda such that a transpose mu plus lambda is equal to c and lambda is greater than equal to zero that is it is in r n plus this means r n plus this is some because I have taken x is in r n plus and lambda r the Lagrangian multipliers or the multipliers associated with x. So, that this lambda vector is in r n. So, this will be in r n, r n plus which is lambda greater than 0. Sometimes lambda in the literature you will always see. So, this is that in place of mu people are writing y, in place of lambda people are writing s that we can do specifically we will go we will adhere more to the linear programming community when we will go on to the special set of things that we will study which I would like to call the pleasures of linear programming. And uh, we do it because it is a subclass of convex programming and it is very very important. Now, I will give you a homework. The problem is a linear, pro linear programming problem. Minimize Cx. Ax is bigger than equal to b. X greater than equal to zero. Another problem is to minimize Cx. Ax now Ax greater than equal to b here means component wise bigger and component wise lesser. Now, the question is construct the Lagrangian dual for these two. So, the homework is follows construct So, you will uh, tell me or other I will tell you possibly in the next class what are the answers of these. So, now we go to a more general category of optimization problem. That is SDP the semi definite programming problem. So, you know our theater is in S n the space of n cross n symmetric matrices and the cone that is useful here is S n plus the cone of positive semi definite matrices. They are symmetric n cross n and same PSD n cross n right. Of course, each a i is in S n and x should be in S n plus r n plus is now replaced with S n plus. So, this we have already discussed earlier as an important class of convex optimization problem, a semi definite programming problem or colloquially known as SDP. SDP, as I would like to stress once again, that is the hottest area of current research not because it is something novel because your decision variables are no longer vectors but matrices but it has huge application many problems are of this form and further for this class of problems you can write down a polynomial time algorithm which is a very very important thing and it is very important to notice again that SDB problems have recently shown a great promise in handling 
problem, non-convex global optimization problems, you can actually uh, consider for example, a polynomial optimization problem which is a very hard problem and then it can be shown as it as had been shown by Lazare very recently in the la, in this particular decade uh, in this not uh, yeah, in this not decade I would say in the previous decade in 2002 I guess that give me a problem which is a polynomial optimization problem and I can write down a sequence of semi definite relaxations of that problem and I can solve the semi definite relaxation by standard techniques which are now well known including a software and the sequence finally goes and converges to the actual solution of, a, of the polynomial optimization problem to some one of the actual solutions. So, this is a very very uh, big move because if he got the Lagrange price for this because here we are telling that look here is a very difficult non convex optimization problems problem and it's so difficult to solve it but okay instead of trying to find a crude uh, algorithm about it you have a very good approximation which can be wh whose approximated components can be easily solved and then you finally can get a quite a very robust in some sense approximate solution so what it means that even when my problem is a non convex polynomial optimization problem, I am actually still in the convex world and that is why convex optimization is such an important area. Now, the question as I told you earlier that this problem is not just a linear problem in matrices, it, not, it is not just a linear programming problem in matrices. it is a general convex problem since of course, those who know S n plus is not polyhedral. Can you again think of reason why? Now, the question is does the do this problem have a dual I can imitate what I have done for the pre other case and write the following I can now construct a Lagrangian. So, how do I construct a Lagrangian associated with the SDB problem? Here I will not use, I cannot explicitly write down the inequality constraints, the, these constraints in form of inequalities. So, I will do the following x the lambda is in S n. I equal to 1 to m. So, this x which a i are in S n. So, this is also in S n. So, this can be written as C of x plus lambda 1 b 1 minus a 1 x lambda m b m minus now once I have constructed this the clever trick is that I am not including this constraint which is a hard constraint that x has to be positive semi definite into the this framework into the Lagrangian framework for the, how to in the formulation of the Lagrangian because I cannot write it down in form of inequalities. 
I can write down by what is called the Luener ordering, I can write down like this. But then I at least have no idea how would you bring in that as an inequality constant here. Possibly you can by multiplying with some um, PD, um, PD matrices. So, but we are not going to handle this way, but we will allow you to think over how to do it. You can do it, uh, but it is not apparent because you cannot write down the Lagrangian, you cannot write down this in a easy form of inequalities as you have done for this case, as you have done for the LP case. Okay, somebody said, okay, okay, let, let, let me tell you one thing, we can just possibly extend this Lagrangian a bit. Okay, let me do, I will just write L x s lambda, the lambda is a vector, right. I am writing this lambda in form of like almost looks like a matrix, but I should write as lambda. The lambda is a vector because it is nothing but lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m. No, oh, sorry, it should not be not in S n, it should be in R m. Well, R a. Now, I can now construct another Lagrangian. I can construct another Lagrangian. This is in S n, this is in S n plus and this is in R m. Let us see, this we will construct like this, almost an imitation for the linear case. Plus the remaining same part lambda 1 into Now, once you know this, you can again say that okay, I can either write construct my dual function as theta naught lambda by minimizing L x lambda over x element of S n plus or I can construct theta capital S capital lambda and then of course, maximizing then my dual problem then is to maximize theta hat lambda over lambda. This is my dual problem. I can also write this one as not mean I should write inf, but okay, it does not matter mean and inf things you gradually understand that if the mean, if there is no point where the minimum is achieved, then of course, that is what is the infimum. Here, my infimum is not over S n plus, but over S n of L x S lambda. Now, let me take the second formulation and then try to see how do I compute this, what is this. So, in order to do so, I, I again write down like the I did it for the linear programming case. I am rewriting this fact. Now, I will club lambda 1, b 1, lambda m, b m together and basically I will have lambda b, which we could have written as mu b also does not matter minus lambda 1 a 1 plus lambda m a m. I want to again remind those have forgotten what is the inner product between 2 
symmetric matrix as it is trace of x y. So, I can again write lambda b plus c minus s minus lambda 1 a 1 lambda m a m. See this symbol is called the Luenard's ordering. This simply means that x is positive semi definite. Obviously, you do not have to bother too much about a name. Now, I leave it to you to prove that if this expression So, theta s lambda is finite and is equal to lambda b if and only if this is 0. So, by a linear programming type of argument, your dual problem is max of b lambda subject to c. So, this c minus this this thing is 0. So, c minus this thing is equal to s and s is in s n plus. Okay. So, my dual problem in, in the dual variable I can also write the dual problem as follows. So, as per linear programming this is what happens of course, I can write it as either if I can write it like this that is lambda 1 a 1 or you can write it as This last this 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 sort of inequalities is, are called linear matrix inequalities or LMI. Has a lot of applications in electrical engineering. So you see, we have learned how to construct our duals for both the linear programming case in the standard form, and two are kept for homework, and the case of semi definite programming. Okay. Suppose, I want to take this formulation what would happen that is the question. So, if I take this formulation that is I have to take in, in for x element of s n plus let us see what would happen. In this case, it can be written as b into lambda, sorry, lambda b. Now, you see x is element of s n plus. Now, you can argue that unless this is equal to s n plus, I cannot say anything. Now, x is in s n plus and okay, if I look into the formulation, I 
Now, x is now in S n plus, I have to minimize over that. So, when do I have a finite value for this? Now, you see that if this is in S n plus, then this is greater than or equal to 0, which means if c minus lambda 1 a 1 lambda 2 a 2 lambda m a m is in S n plus, then if you have 2, this is a very standard result you can figure out yourself. So, if A is in S n plus positive semi definite and B is also in S n plus, then trace of A B is of course, it is not a very standard result I just said it is a standard result. Uh, this is something linked to something called self duality of the cone, which is not immediately obvious, but we can we will figure this out in detail when we study semi definite programming. There is the part of the course is focused on semi definite programming. So, and we will see how much helpful semi definite programming is to many many areas when it can enter even non convex problem, break the bones and of non convex problems and give us something. So, now if this is in S n plus and because x is in S n plus, this would be greater than or equal to 0. So, if this is in S n plus, I would have L x lambda to be bigger than B of lambda, because this is bigger than or equal to 0, right. Now, what is the infimum value? See, if I put this equal to 0, then L x lambda is B lambda. So, in fact, this is what is true. So, I have inf over x element of S n plus if So, if this is true, which is exactly what we were telling. So, this is bigger than this, but you know at the end I want an equality, I always wanted an equality. How do I get an equality? Let me let us ponder. But x is in an element of S n plus. So, when I put x is equal to 0, the 0 matrix is in also in S n plus, this is positive semi definite. When I put this is equal x is equal to 0, then I get back the value B lambda. So, B lambda is one of the values of L x lambda obtained as I move x through S n plus. So, which means finally, I get inf of L x lambda with x element of S n plus to be B lambda if this holds. So, my dual is again to maximize B lambda such that C minus lambda 1 A 1 minus lambda to a 2. So, I showed that in both ways you can come to the same conclusion. So, any way you can pro proceed. Again I am putting the low inner ordering. We have no time to prove the strong duality result today and we will end the talk today here and in the next lecture we would talk about the proof of the strong duality theorem and show that if the Slater condition does not hold for a convex programming problem, we can give examples where strong duality fails. And for non-convex problems, strong duality does not hold. See this, this st story of love constructing Lagrangian dual is irrespective of whether the problem is convex or not. But here since we are concentrated on convex problems, we will show that even for a convex problem, if, we, if Slater condition fails, the strong duality goes. We will have examples even for semi-definite programming problems. Thank you very much.